How much do you really know about the fallen angel of Satan himself, the opposer? Greetings mortals, I'm your host Simon. Welcome back to the Library of Gnosis. Before we get into the main broadcast, I would like to highlight the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. They are currently running a 60% discount campaign. This is a sponsor I personally picked because people like Edward Snowden have shown us the need for privacy and why it is important. What is great about NordVPN and why I picked them as a sponsor is because they do not cooperate with the international government spy network known as the 5 Eye Alliance nor the 14 Eye Alliance. Something I have actually been planning to make a video about in the future. So anyways, if you want to support me and my work and get a sweet deal on a virtual private network that hides your data from your elite overlords, then check out the affiliate link in the description. Now back to the video. I have previously mentioned the fact that the Bible is an astro-theological corpus, meaning it is in some sense a story of the heavenly bodies, as above so below. I have previously mentioned that Jesus is correlated to the sun, but what about Satan himself? Well, Jesus is a star and Satan used to be an angel. So perhaps we should look in our solar system for a planet that used to be a star. Well, there just so happens to be at least one planet in our solar system that matches those criteria. And one I wish to focus on. One with a halo. The Lord of the Rings. Sauron. Oh no, I meant to say Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. It is a complicated calculus, but Fuller's results suggest that the presence of a calm, stable layer of gas near Saturn's rocky core, an arrangement that does not fit with classical theories describing planet innards, and instead aligns more closely with what's going on inside stars, like the sun. The fluid is basically not moving at all, Fuller says. It is a very non-turbulent region. In Saturn's rings, a portal to the planet's interior. National Geographic. As a giant gas planet, Saturn does not have solid ground. Saturn contains a rocky core, 10 to 20 times the mass of Earth, which is surrounded by liquid metallic hydrogen. This massive core was likely the first part of the planet created, and it trapped gas as the planet formed. Moving out from the core, the liquid hydrogen becomes less metallic, gradually shifting into a gas the further one travels from the center of the planet. The interior may reach temperatures of up to 12,000 Kelvin. Because the distance to Saturn from the Sun averages 886 million miles, most of the planet's heat comes from its core. Saturn radiates more than twice as much heat into space as it receives from the Sun. Saturn's temperature, one cool planet, space. Saturn, Latin Saturnus, was a god in ancient Roman religion and a character in Roman mythology. He was described as a god of generation, dissolution, plenty, wealth, agriculture, periodic renewal and liberation. Saturn's mythological reign was depicted as a golden age of plenty and peace. After the Roman conquest of Greece, he was conflated with the Greek titan Cronus. Saturn is Satan, Cronus. They think Saturn once used to be a star, the fallen angel, he who shone brighter than them all. At the south pole of Saturn is what looks extremely much like an eye, Lord of the Rings. This one eye, the blind god, the fool Samael. How does it make you feel to be staring into the eye of Satan? We find something very interesting when we look at the north pole. As you can see, there is a six-sided hexagon. This is where we get the number of the beast, six, from. And the hexagon is also a 2D image of a 3D cube. This is called the cube of Saturn. The large black cubes of Saturn are displayed as markers around the world in places where the powerful Luciferian elites wish to display their power, symbolism and allegiance to Satan slash Lucifer without the general public even being aware of their meaning and significance. And while not shown here, this symbolism is often shown and temporarily displayed in major worldwide sporting events like the Olympic closing events and annual Super Bowl halftime shows. Black Cube of Saturn and satanic symbolism is incorporated into various religions around the world that many worshippers are completely unaware of. 
In Islam, they run around a black cube that is called the Kaaba, or simply the cube. The Kaaba is built around a sacred black stone, a meteorite that Muslims believe was placed by Abraham and Ishmael in a corner of the Kaaba, a symbol of God's covenant with Abraham and Ismail, and by extension with the Muslim community itself. He can also be compared to the Gnostic Demiurge, hence the square representing matter. The colors of Saturn is black and red. You can for instance find these colors in the Queen's Royal Guard, and judges in English courts wear black robes. Red also represents the root or base chakra, and in alchemy Saturn correlates to the metal lead, hence the alchemical turning of lead into gold, which I will cover further when we get into squaring the circle. Saturn was especially celebrated during the festivals of Saturnalia each December, perhaps the most famous of the Roman festivals, a time of feasting, role reversals, free speech, gift giving and revelry. Saturn had two mistresses who represented different aspects of the god. The name of his wife, Ops, the Roman equivalent of the Greek Rhea means wealth, abundance, resources. The association with Ops is considered a later development. However, as this goddess was originally paired with Consus, earlier was Saturn associated with Lua, destruction, dissolution, loosening, a goddess who received the blooded weapons of enemies destroyed in war. Under Saturn's rule, humans enjoyed the spontaneous beauty of the earth without labor in the golden age described by Hesiod and Ovid. He became known as the god of time. By Saturn, they seek to represent that power which maintains the cyclical course of time and seasons. This is the sense that the Greek name of the god bears, for he is called Cronus which is the same as Cronus or time. Saturn for his part got his name because he was sated with years. The story that he regularly devoured his own children is explained by the fact that time devours the course of the seasons and gorges itself insatiably on the years that are past. Saturn was enchained by Jupiter to ensure that his circuits did not get out of control and to constrain him with the bonds of the stars. Quintinius Lucius Balbus, as quoted by Cicero. Little evidence exists in Italy for the cult of Saturn outside of Rome, but his name resembles that of the Etruscan god Satres. The potential cruelty of Saturn was enhanced by his identification with Cronus, known for devouring his own children. He was thus used in translation when referring to the gods from other cultures that Roman perceived as severe. He was equated with the Cartesian's god Baal, Hamon, to whom children were sacrificed, and to Yahweh, whose Sabbath was referred to as Saturni Dais, Saturn's Day, in a poem by Tibullus, who wrote during the reign of Augustus. Eventually, this gives rise to the word Saturday in English. But Saturn also had a less benevolent aspect as indicated by the blood shed in his honor during gladiatorial Munera. His consort in archaic Roman tradition was Lua, sometimes called Lua Saturni, Saturn's Lua, and identified with Lua Mater, Mother Destruction, a goddess in whose honor the weapons of enemies killed in war were burned, and perhaps as expedition. Versnell, however, proposed that Lua Saturni should not be identified with Lua Matter, but rather refers to loosening. She thus represents the liberating function of Saturn. In 104 BCE, the plebeian tribune Lucius Apelius Saturnius issued a denarius depicting Saturn driving a four-horse chariot, a vehicle associated with rulers, triumphing generals, and sun gods. Saturnius was a popularist politician who had proposed reduced price grain distribution to the poor of Rome. His nature became evident in his mastership over the annual time of crisis around the winter solstice. Epitomized in the power of subverting normal codified social order and its rules, which is apparent in the festival of the Saturnalia, in the mastership of annual fertility and renewal, in the power of annihilation present in his padre Lua, 
in the fact that he is a god of timeless era of plenty and bounty before time, which he reinstates at the time of the yearly crisis of the winter solstice. Sacrifices to Saturn were performed according to Greek rites, with the head uncovered, in contrast to those of the other major Roman deities, which were performed capite velatu, with the head covered. Saturn himself, however, was represented as veiled, in volotus, as for example in a wall painting from Pompeii that shows him holding a sickle and covered with a white veil. The Romans celebrated Saturnalia during December 17th, the darkest part of the year, where they committed both human and animal sacrifice, and had sexual orgies, which even children were included in. Slaves became masters, everything was turned upside down, like the satanic imagery of turning the cross upside down. Satanists are worshipping the black sun, Saturn, the fallen star, where we get the name Saturday. Notice how much debauchery goes on in your average Saturday night. The Jesuits also have the black sun as their symbol as well. According to the secret FS teachings, Saturnus is the great judge that manifests justice. He also brings reason and intelligence and governs all standards of weight, measurements and number. He is the lord of the seven dwellings, planetary genii of the outer realm and governor of the revealed world and lord over life and death and over light and darkness. Saturnus is seen as the breaker of cosmic order and unity. Thus he instituted death causing regeneration and change to come into being. One of the ways in which he broke the cosmic order was in revelation of divine secrets to mankind. For this he was punished. The great work 2871619.wordpress.com Now, this has just been a brief introduction into Saturnism as this video would go on forever and I'm saving that for my next broadcast as in my next broadcast, we will go more into depth on the topic of Saturn and how it relates to the alchemical squaring of the circle. They say there is nothing new under the sun, but this time I really do think I have outdone myself. So look forward to that. Why do we wink? I want to leave you with the speech from Alan Watts. Now of course we have a method of passing the buck in all matters of responsibility by saying well, the past is responsible for me. For instance, when dealing with a difficult child, we are apt to say, well, bang him about, beat him up, maybe he'll change. But then we say, no, that's not fair to the child to beat him up, because it was his parents' fault. They didn't bring him up properly. And so then we say, well, punish the parents. But the parents say, well, excuse me, but our parents were neurotic too, and they brought us up badly so we cannot help what we did. And since the grandparents are dead, we can't get at them. And if we could, we would pass the whole blame back to Adam and Eve. We would say, they started all this mess. But then Eve would say, no, the serpent tempted me and I did eat. Then it was the serpent's fault. When God asked Eve, this thou eat the fruit of the tree, whereof I told thee thou should not eat. She said, Oh, but the serpent tempted me, and I did eat. And God looked at the serpent, and the serpent did not make any excuse. He probably winked, because the serpent, being an angel, was wise enough to know where the present begins. So you see, if you insist on being moved, being determined by the past, that's your game. But the fact of the matter is that it all starts right now. Thank you for listening. See you next time, mortal. Remember to hit that bell button to stay notified. Subscribe for more Red Pill content. Do give it a like if you enjoyed it. And feel free to share it. If you want to support my work, you can find me on Patreon at Library of Gnosis. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and BitChute at Library of Gnosis. 
The audio versions of my broadcasts are available on Spotify as a podcast at Library of Noses.